So when preparing this speech, I went upstairs to our guest bedroom where I keep all of my old yearbooks, photo albums, and random things I kept from high school. And I started digging everything out to take a stroll down memory lane. And I came across something that I wrote for a creative writing class my senior year. And I'd like to share it with you and everyone here. For my very first journal entry, I'd like it to be about my best friend. Rachel Vick has been close to me all of high school, but we grew closer as the years passed as quickly as they did. Whatever happens, I know she will always be there for me. If we are bored, we always know how to have fun. We love to drive around and listen to loud music and just be girls. I can never get enough of our funny dancing, unstoppable laughs, and inside jokes. She is more than a best friend to me. She's like the sister I never had. I really hope Rachel and I always have this tight bond that we have, even when we go our separate ways. So here we are 17 years later, and I am so honored and grateful to be standing next to you as your matron of honor. Rachel, I adore our friendship, and the history we share together is so special to me. I'm so happy you find your true love in Ryan. Ryan, I know you will love and care for Rachel for the rest of her life. I couldn't wish for a better groom for my best friend. When you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Cheers to the rest of your lives together. Mr. and Mrs. Carter. We were in the backyard one time. We built the tree house in the back backyard of mom and dad's house and so they built this zip line and uh, it went from like the very top of the tree house to the very bottom after like 20 minutes of them talking me into it like all right brad you got this we're gonna be there at the bottom to grab you and well you're not gonna hit the tree i'm going probably mach three out of uh, the crow's nest of the top of the tree house like straight toward a pine tree like like i'm head on like the they went Ryan and Matt went flying out of the way. I mean, I, I pancaked, like smack dab in the middle of the thing. Like, after I hit the tree, Ryan was there to uh, nurse me back to consciousness and stuff like that. So he's very supportive, caring. Always been a person I've really, uh, truly looked up to and, and I continue to do so. You truly will leave here tonight with a wife who's warm, caring, loving, and most of all, she's super funny and awesome. Now, Rachel, I'm so happy and overcome with joy to call you my sister-in-law. I wish you nothing but the best for both of you for years to come. I love you both. We have gathered together in the presence of God to celebrate a commitment of love, a commitment that Ryan, Rachel, believe to be the leadership of God in their lives. And out of affection and honor for this great couple, we are here to witness their vows, which will unite them in marriage. And to this moment, they bring the fullness of their hearts as a treasure to share with one another. They bring the spark and the spirit, which is uniquely their own, which has grown for some time and will continue to grow and deepen and strengthen the precious reality of life together. You know, it's always interesting to me to see who gathers together for a wedding because there's a good chance a lot of you know each other really well. You've lived your lives together, you've shared stories. And then there's a lot of others who are complete strangers. And the reason you're all in this room together today is because of the connection to these two people. And in that situation, it's easy to find common ground. Because we understand that when it comes down to it, we all share this idea that we were made to love and to be loved. And with that understanding, it's easy to tune out the things that make us different. We're reminded of a simple but maybe a profound truth that God didn't create us to be the same, but He did create us to be together. And that's also true for the two of you, Rachel and Ryan. The path that brought you to this spot is winding and complicated, full of twists and turns that could have led you apart from each other, but it has you standing here today. And you are not the same. You're wired differently. You find joy in different things. You get mad at different things. You're inspired by different things. That's how it's supposed to be. The really great couples take all those differences and they let them be the ingredients that make decades together unpredictable, compelling, 
Because what's true for all of us is also true for the two of you. That God didn't create you to be the same. He created you to be together. My prayer for you today is that you'll be people who don't just see love as a word that describes how you feel. Instead, I hope love becomes the foundation of a lifelong partnership in pursuit of purpose and meaning and outward expression reflective of souls that are content and at peace. I vow to be both your cheerleader and your critic. I vow to celebrate your successes and encourage you through your failures. I vow to continue having dance-off parties in the kitchen, martini Fridays, which result in us FaceTiming everyone in our phone book. I vow to love you fiercely, honestly, and faithfully until my last breath. I promise to make your life as grand and as full as you have made mine. Three years ago, I did take a huge gamble. Quit my job, packed my car, just left. I was in search for a better life. I was in search for trying to find the woman that I was gonna marry. And yes, that day in Eastland Cafe, when you walked in through the door, I knew you were the one. It's taken my entire life to find you. And I promise to do everything that I need to do for you to keep me. I love you, Rachel. Ryan and Rachel, because you have exchanged sacred vows, because you've given rings as symbols of your commitment to Christian marriage, it is my privilege to pronounce from this day forward that you are now husband and wife. And what God has joined together, let no man separate. So Ryan, you may kiss your bride. Just a few words to Ryan and Rachel. Uh, to our Rachel, we would say she has been our pride and our joy every minute of every hour and every hour of every day since her birth. Her happiness has been our greatest priority. And we're very pleased that she's found a man that will love her, honor her, cherish her, and keep her calm through all the traffic that life bears. The four of us had uh, driven into Nashville for a performance by some of their friends at a local club. And as, after we were there for about an hour, uh, for some reason I started to feel really lightheaded. So I told Ryan that I was gonna go outside and get some air. And he decided to come outside with me. And as we were standing outside in, in the smoke-filled area, listening to Ryan, which, which is what you do when you're standing next to Ryan. Anyway, I told him that I was, I was feeling even worse, so I'd better get inside and find a chair. Ryan casually leaned over, looked at me and said, dude, you hit that wall and passed out cold. He said, he said you were an asshole. Seriously, he did. So we knew that he was very comfortable with us right from the beginning. Okay, so a quick toast in Latin, then translated into English. Quod financia libertatum nostrum salutem tuam, which means to your health and our financial independence. I really appreciate all of you taking time out of your busy schedules and traveling to be with us today because it took me a very long time to find him. But before I found him, I found a lot of you. Thank you very much for being here. I know a lot of you traveled very far. Cheers to everyone. Let's have fun and party. <laughs>